Welcome back, Quick Brain. So here's your question. People ask about this a lot in our private Facebook group. How do you overcome math anxiety to the point where you could improve your finances? Because they go hand in hand. When we're thinking about credit card statements and interest rate and refinancing this or your 401k, all of these things, even people playing the lottery, they, they don't know the, like the math behind like winning the lottery. And so I'm excited to have this conversation around math anxiety, the fear of numbers, and talking about things you could do to mitigate that. So that way you could actually boost your your financial and conquer conquer your finances, if you will. And I'm excited to have back in the studio here, we're still here, Danica McKellar. And she, as you know, is uh, the author of uh, numerous books on math and some of my yeah. favorite math books ever. <laughs> New York you. Times bestselling author. And um, thanks for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. And I, I, I have loved writing math books. It's been such an interesting addition to my acting career. You know, of course, I know you're wearing your shirt right now that says I Wonder know. on it for the Wonder Years. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Hallmark Channel movies now. You'll Basically, if you turn on Hallmark Channel, you'll you're, see me I've, during I the day at some point. <laughs> I could attest to this. Yeah, they rerun my movies all the time, and I do new ones all the time. And yeah, um, I love I love working on that channel. But yeah, it's been I've got this great like dual career, and and I love that we're talking today about math and money and finances because that is one of the most practical reasons to get good at math, or at right. least to be comfortable with math. What I what I say I do speaking engagements quite often, and and. One of the things I always say is, look, if you are a child who avoids, you know, and is, is confused by math, then you're going to keep avoiding numbers as an adult. And numbers run the world. Yeah. I mean, it is like the it's, second it's, language everyone should speak, it, right? It is because here's the thing. Can you get through life without knowing much about math? You can. I mean, it's a little easier than trying to get through life without being able to read. But here's the thing, if you if you don't if you're not familiar with numbers, you're not comfortable with numbers and how percents work and all those kinds of things, there are many institutions that would love to take advantage of that. Right. Whether it's um, any contract you get into, um, your credit card statements, mortgage, whatever. Th these things, you know, if someone says, "Oh, well, let's re let's refinance your house," you know, we'll get you at a lower rate, but then they increase the amount of the loan. Like that kind of tricky stuff. That, that'll happen to you, left and right. And, and they are taking full advantage of the fact that you would rather ignore the numbers and avoid it and move on to the next thing rather than deal with it. And where does that come from? It's math phobia that starts at a yeah. young age. I mean, that's why I write these books for young kids, because I want them to never have a moment of remembering any time in their life when math was scary. Well, starting with good night numbers. This is a sweet bedtime book. You got 10 magic butterflies. This is a fantasy land where the kids learn how to make 10 from two numbers, 9 and 1, 8 and 2, you name it. They're learning math in the context of fun, real-world circumstances that don't feel scary at all. Uh, I, I spoke at a school, a middle school, gosh, it was probably 10 years ago now, before I'd written the young books. I was just, I'd written Math Doesn't Suck and then Kiss My Math. So middle school math, um, percents, decimals, things like that. And I remember getting in front of these kids and they were looking at me, it was 50% below the poverty line. And they were looking at me like, who is this woman? What is she going to tell us that we're going to care about? And I started by saying, hey, how many of you guys have ever wanted to maybe start your own business? A bunch of them raised their hands. Yeah, well, what kind of business would you like to start? Uh, you know, toys, clothes, shoes, whatever, bubble gum. Well, guess what's going to keep those doors open? Math. And guess what's going to happen if you don't learn your math? You're going to get ripped off. You're going to get these are your two choices. <laughs> get good at math or get ripped off. And let me tell you something. They all listened because this affects everybody. We all can get ripped off easily. And the worst part is we don't even know it. We don't yeah. even know we're getting ripped off. So, you know what? I want to do whatever I can to make sure people are not afraid of math. Does everyone have to become a math lover like I No, of course not. But I want every kid growing up to say, you know what, though? But I can do it. Right. I can totally do it, though. It's not my favorite thing, but I got this. And that's really, that's really my goal. So, and any adult listening, it's not too late for you. Really? I promise. Because I think some people <laughs> listening have such a, it is a not fear around numbers. Percents, and they don't... You know, percents and fractions and decimals, these are basic things that are so good to know. I do teach them, and math doesn't suck. There are plenty of other places you can learn about them. I, you know, for me, it's all about integrating play and fun into it so it doesn't feel too mathy or dry. But there are plenty of places. I just recommend push past your fears. What's the worst thing that can happen? Do it late at night when no one knows you're doing it, but study a little bit of math. Just like, just a little bitty little baby steps, just decimals, percents. How do they work together? What does it mean? 
when you feel your brain shutting off because of emotional trauma, you, you'll you know, okay, this is the moment <laughs> that I recognize that this is not a rational fear. It's an irrational, like, you know, childhood-based uh, demon that I need to excise. And I can help you do that. I could see this because before coming to the studio, I shown one of your books to a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. And she was going through it, and she noticed that she actually has a resistance to numbers and that yeah. it also manifests in her, her finances. Right, of course. Because she actually avoids. She doesn't even like looking at numbers. Right, right. So she won't even look at even her spending patterns and her budgeting and all those different things because of an irrational fear that was there, you know, got imprinted when she was like six. Yeah. No, here I, I talk about, uh, you know, I'm talking about decimals and um, uh, talking about I say, why calculators would make terrible boyfriends. Okay. Um, how to entertain yourself while babysitting a devil child. This is like, these are the names of the chapters because this, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that I do to teach, um, to teach math because it's fun and it doesn't feel mathy. Her exact words was she wishes this was her, her math textbook back in school. Oh, well, because... it can be now. And that's what I really want to emphasize to, to adults listening, that you don't have to hold on to that limitation. You're the one who said that. People hold on to their limitations. What is that it? Am yeah, I quoting yeah, you, you correctly? Yeah. If you argue for your limitations. Argue, yes. People fight for the limit. Yeah, Stop you... fighting for your limitation in math. <laughs> and they have this identity issue. It's just like, I'm not this right? person. And it's almost a delight. And I'm not sure why people almost delight in the comfort of Like it's saying, a badge of honor or something. Badge of honor. Oh, yeah, I can't do math. I'm terrible. But nobody would ever do that when it comes to like reading, for example. Oh, right. I can't read. Yeah. What? Right. <laughs> you wouldn't be proud of that. Don't be proud of not being able to do math it's not it's not the end of the world because you can fix it you can yeah, do something about exactly. it but don't fight you know don't fight for that limitation and people think like they because they took the SATs or some kind of standardized test and mm-hmm. there's a reflection on their intelligence but it's not necessarily how smart somebody is or you're you're thinking about this because you have kids how smart they are mm-hmm. but it's really how are you smart and when you learn how you learn the best you could apply it towards math or music or marketing or yeah. any subject so this is while we're having yeah. a conversation around so math true. If this math is like X, you know, X equals, well, it's like it could be anything that gives you anxiety. Right. And the idea I love here how is... you're going to use a math right. analogy <laughs> to talk about math. Exactly. I'm not sure. So I'm really sure. freaking out people. You're not going to learn it. You're not going to lose any listeners at, of that. At, <laughs> at a meta level, we're really freaking people out Okay, right so now. your fear is X. Okay, X this is, is the equation. Yeah. No. So, but it, it literally insert <laughs> X, whatever it is. It's just the idea here is if you are, it it doesn't have to be permanent. No, and that And course. that if you make a mistake, even in math, it's okay that... We had we had another guest. She said talk about mistakes and failure. And she said and she said that yeah, if failure is not an option, then neither is success. Ooh, yeah, failure is not an option. And so like math, like you you make a mistake and then but there's no mistakes because it's just proof that you're trying and then you well, learn the, from so it. So here's the thing: what I like to str- st- the struggle is part of the learning process. Right. Just like when you go to the gym and you're lifting weights, the struggle that's why you're going to get better at lifting that weight and get stronger. If you lift l- light weights all day long, you're not going to learn anything you're not going to get better you're not going to get stronger people don't realize that math is wonderful and we have to i want to do another episode now on mental fitness because this is a different topic like on it helps with your problem solving ability i mean it's incredible in every part of your life it's it's a good investment in your time and by the way you don't have to buy my books they're at the library um there's you know just take the time don't spend money on it just take the time just take the time and, and, and give yourself that gift. Absolutely. And invest in some way, wh- whether it's these books or something else, because investment in knowledge, as they say, always pays the best dividends. And that's math also as well. <laughs> it is. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so so the, 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 right the, right the right takeaway now. right now is that if you have a fear of numbers, this fear was learned. Yes. And you could turn fear into fun yeah. by adding creativity, adding imagination. Absolutely. Gamifying this for yourself or for your children yeah, if you've also got as kids, well. Start them early. Start exactly. them early. Exactly. Because it's a lot easier to, to work with them then before, you know, than fixing adults when it comes to this, you know, like Right. Well and that's what we all want for our kids. We want them to have it more easy than, than you know, yeah. easier than we had it. And yeah, my books, look, you can get them on Amazon, you can go to mckellarmath.com and see them all there. You can go to the library, they've got most of my books at, at most libraries. But So um, there's no excuse. There there there's no excuse. They're for all ages, zero yeah. you know, from the 
tiniest babies, you know, reading them sweet math stories that they'll always remember and have cuddly associations with, speaking of associations, um, up through adults. So. Yeah. And if you're avoiding this, usually, especially when we, we, we title this around like wealth and finances, because that's something that we could all relate to yeah. every single day. Yes. And so maybe that this is really a wake up call for some people who are listening, that basically we're saying that that maybe the treasure that you seek is hidden in yeah. like the the work that you're avoiding and maybe this math could really open things up and little by little little becomes a lot because consistency compounds there's another math term you're just this, full this, of the math great. <laughs> it was it's you know it's a form of self care too you know take care of your brain go to the gym and take care of your body do a little little math and take care of your brain and you know the whole point is let's make this fun so it doesn't feel scary. And when it's fun, then you're going to do the right things like save and invest and do all the things. And you could treat it as like more yeah. fun. Who doesn't want to feel like they're in charge of their own life, the CEO of their own company? Right. They've got the power and the, the strength to say, you know what? That's not a good investment. Or, you know what? I'm going to call my credit card company because that APR is BS. And it gives you responsibility. <laughs> and it gives you power. You, look at the, you, know, you can call, you know, you look at your APR on your credit card. If you don't like it, call your credit card statement and say, this is, your, the, call the company and say, this is too high. Right. I don't like this. I'm like, well, no, no, I've been paying my bills on time. You need to lower my APR. Okay, fine. And you can pay attention to those numbers. It does. Because you get your, your sovereignty back. You get your power Absolutely. back. As opposed to giving out to these institutions that take advantage of people <laughs> who are not math literate. Right. Yeah, And you don't have to be perfect at this. It's just, it's a process. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Danica. Thank you. So everyone who's watching this right now, we, here's the quick challenge. Take a screenshot of this video. Take a screenshot of this episode. Uh, tag Danica. Tag myself in it also as well. And uh, share your big aha from this conversation. How are you with math? We're just really curious to read these comments. And for some of our favorite ones, we will re I will repost them and also give away a signed copy of one of Danica's books just as a thank you for you guys. Because I know you know leaders are readers and our, our community loves to read. So we'll see you at the next episode.